I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I've owned my own business for 12 years. It was a branding firm. It was an award-winning branding firm. I had great clients, Fortune 500 clients. I've had celebrity clients. I've had highly visible clients. Um, and I was just kind of living the life. I decided to chronicle my personal challenges by blogging. And that opened up a whole lot of doors for me. But I think the thing that it did more than anything was it made me face my own brokenness. <laughs> so, but you know, ladies, we're never just our careers, right? So I'm also a daughter. My parents were married for 46 years. Um, I'm the youngest of five. That's me in the corner right here <laughs> with the missing teeth. Does everybody have one of those 1970s old men? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, every family major giving your Sunday clothes and yeah. dressed like that. Because I'm also, you know, that girlfriend, the sister friend, the cousin, the supporter. You know, we wear lots of hats as women, correct? Yes. Correct. And we all try to do it well, and we all try to do it with you know, that stern face that we've got it right and we've got it all together. together. But what happens when it all falls apart? What happens when your world literally collapses? Okay. So in 2001, my father became a quadriplegic. I'm sorry, in 2000 he became a quadriplegic. In 2001, my cousin, who's also like a sister, her three-year-old son drowned in her backyard. Okay. September 11th happened, 2001, which changed the total economy, and I lost my six-figure job. And then in 2002, I lost my beloved mother. These were the big things that happened in my life. These were the big problems. In a period of about four years, 13 members of my family died. I ended up in Grady with not one, but needing two blood transfusions. And that was the big stuff. I still had other stuff. My car got totaled. I broke up with my boyfriend. I mean, the hits just kept on coming. And I was under spiritual attack, emotional attack, physical attack. I was literally just trying to figure out how do I survive? And some people know, you know, the friend that got diagnosed with cancer or the brother that got stricken with HIV. We have those people every day living among us and they suffer in silence and they don't talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when, when something uh, catastrophic happens to you, people say, you'll be okay, <laughs> right? But nobody actually allows you to be, to feel, yeah. to know. Nobody sits in that pain with you. And as a matter of fact, if you, <clears throat> if you talk too long, okay, if you cry too many times, you kind of get the you ain't over it yet face, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? So we don't get our full range of emotions. And I decided that. So I shut down my six-figure company. And I walked away from my successful career. And I broke up with those toxic relationships, male and female. And I decided to start to create spaces where I'm not only accepted, but embraced. And that gave me a new approach, approach no fear, no apologies. I don't want to apologize because I had food poisoning. I don't want to be afraid to stand up in front of people because I don't want them to call me fat. Okay? I don't want to live in a world that does not like me. So let me create a space where I'm liked and I'm loved, all right? Own your own brokenness, own your own shit, okay? It's yours. <laughs> Live with it, love it, and walk in it. I always tell people, if you don't know my journey, you're not allowed to, to, to judge me. Yes. If you don't know my journey, you're not allowed to judge me. And she says, Jay, this is the sign that you have arrived. Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this is what makes you relevant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, okay, so I got a piece of hate mail the other day. I was like, yay, I'm still relevant. <laughs> <laughs> when you allow other people to have a vote in your life, they will vote wrong for you. I'm Jay Stone, the emotional nudist. You just got naked and refreshed. Yeah.